us for some more dungeons and dragons then um and then on monday it's this monday right that this is happening again uh yes that's what you're announcing <laughs> yeah um i'm just making sure it's this monday and not next monday i don't know what week it is anymore i'll go ahead and just interject here for a second my settings were off they can now hear you. They couldn't hear you for the first like uh, uh, thirty seconds of that. I fixed it before you started talking about Molly Mons. Uh, my audio output was uh, not correct. But um, I did such a good job. You did mostly a good job. <laughs> uh, anyway, job. continue. They didn't miss anything important. Dungeons and Dragons on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It's called Saturday Nights. We play that game then. Then on Monday, we're going to play more Dungeons and Dragons on Motley Mondays, where we have a cast of rotating uh, dungeon masters, and we do a bunch of one-shots. It's very fun. I'm running one this time, so you're going to be seeing a whole lot of me this week. Um, but join us on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for that. I'm running a a really, really cool, kind of dangerous one shot for this cast of characters that we have. So I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and then on our schedule just changed. So I'm still getting my bearings on Tuesday evening at uh, 6 p.m. Is that when we've been starting? 6 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Uh, so around 6 p.m. Uh, we will have another episode of Matripony, um, which again, I'll be there. <laughs> It's been a very busy week for me so far, and it's just going to continue to be so. Um, where me and Sean play video games and try not to ruin our marriage in the process. Uh, we are doing a playthrough of Divinity 2 right now, which has been very fun so far. We're starting to get uh, out of the beginning game stuff and into the fun stuff. So join us then. And then more stuff after that, but that's as far as I'm going to go. And then stuff. I run a game on Sundays, too. <laughs> there was also, did you mention Cyberscape? No, not yet. Uh, do you want me to... There was a new episode of Cyberscape that went up last you said week. said it. Uh, it's up on uh, iTunes and CastBox, so you can find uh, that there. Um, I think it was episode 13. We're getting into a new arc. Um, so check it out. Great time to jump in and uh, get caught up. So Yeah. Other than that, I also run a game on Sundays. It's Apocalypse World at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash encounter roleplay. It's very fun. There's time travel. Uh, and join me for that this coming Sunday. And we're doing a giveaway here on Game Nights. It's very exciting. We're giving away a copy of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, the new D&D uh, &D adventure module that is coming out. Um, we have the tweet pinned to our Twitter and it's got all the information and the link you need to click on uh, to get that information so enter the giveaway join us on the specified date which i think is july 6th um at 3 p.m for saturday nights and <clears throat> excuse me and be in chat for that and you could win a book and then we have some extra like stretch goals and stuff like that we'll be giving away a set of uh dyson miscellany a set of minis that kind of thing if we reach our twitch follower goals, i think we're less than yeah i think we're less than 15 close. away Two, less, so yeah, less than fifteen away to give away the copy to the uh, the dice set. Yeah, um, and it's more than just dice. It's dice. It's a dice tray. It's a dice box. It's a map. It's like a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah. Um. So if we can hit two fifty, 
on Twitch. We'll do that. And then at 300, we'll give away a set of minis as well. It's all Avernus and Blood Wars related. So if you're into that, tell your friends, tell your family. Smash that follow button, I think is what the kids are saying now. And T-pose your way to victory. Thanks. Lindsay went with me on that. I think that's all the announcements. I'm Probably. sure I can think of more, but I don't want to because I want to play this game with you guys instead. So, where we last left off, uh, the squad, the team, I don't know, the party, I don't know what you all want to call yourselves, um, of coursers had traveled uh, to another world. Um, their first kind of time out in a while, uh, traveling in inter uh, between worlds, interdimensionally a little bit, um, to the orcish homeworld, to the city of Lunaterra. Um, they were told that there had been no communication out of the city for the last 72 hours. Everything had gone quiet, and they were to investigate, see what was going on, and uh, wait for further instructions. Um, they did not really do this. <laughs> uh, when they arrived in Lunaterra, um, they realized something was terribly, terribly wrong, um, ultimately coming to the conclusion based on their own sort of terrifying experiences and some conversations with survivors in the city that werewolves had attacked. And uh, now I think they are currently formulating a plan uh, to deal with this Letitia, the leader of said infiltrators and her pack, and uh, save an entire city. And I think also get them vaccinated was on the mm -hmm. was on the docket. Mm -hmm. That's high up uh, there. Because you invented vaccines for lycanthropy, I guess. Um, so that is where we last left off. Um, there, uh, you were all back together, if I remember correctly, and had just finished uh, doing some interrogation. Oh no, I forgot what we named. I don't think we gave him a name. Adam. Adam. And now, yep, <laughs> that is what happened. Uh, some, a little bit of interrogation um, with a uh, the werewolf formerly known as Adam. Um, who was a an orcish resident of Lunaterra who had been uh, very recently turned and uh, you all were deciding what you wanted to do next so what would you like to do next well it sounds like we only have uh, one option yep Time to kill some wolves. Oh! Well, we did report back to, back to Aegis and they sent us silver bullets. Seems fairly clear what they want us to do. Kill them. But I mean, also, some of them are orcs who didn't choose this, so maybe we should, like vaccinate those ones um use the handcuffs they also sent us i yeah. feel like handcuffs were sent first like first priority maybe and then the bullets were like if that doesn't work bullets did we get uh we got some uh vaccines for the uh for lycanthropy uh you Aegis? do not currently have okay. any vaccines um you because you're we're all under strict orders to uh not leave any sort of aegis technology um, right but uh smith with his uh his pull with the agency um and his very very good dice roll um was able to convince them to send a medical team so the the orders right now as they stand are once your intervention is complete and the area is secured um, that a medical team from Aegis will come in, will be dispatched oh. to you with vaccines and vaccinate the the population of, of uh, Lunaterra and then hopefully expand that out to the rest of the Orc homeworld. 
only because you rolled so well last time. I I agree that not all of them need to die, but uh, the ones that came here first, this Letitia and the uh, the ones that came with her, we need to take them out. Yeah, they they do seem pretty malevolent. Uh, so I think it's fair. And I stand by you on this. <clears throat> but I agree that, um, especially if there are any members of the Orcish Parliament or Council that were turned in the process, if we can somehow restore them, though I'm not quite sure if uh, that's possible at this point. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I mean, it depends really uh, on how long. Uh, really, the uh, silver handcuffs can like uh, suppress it for a bit, uh, but as long as they haven't turned with them turned yet, right? Is that right? I ask my brain. Sure. So, Savannah, do you remember what you told us last time? No. I'm oh, great. <laughs> no, I'm... I do. I uh, <laughs> what you what you know is that. Um, any of the the lesser creatures, any of the ones, especially the ones that are feral, which what, the ones that are, the more feral they are, the more recently they have turned. Um, so anyone that was turned recently, any of the like lesser, less powerful ones, the brutes, that kind of thing, the lesser members of the pack uh, can be damaged by silver weapons. Fire is also a good idea. The handcuffs will work on them, that kind of thing. Um, that is what you know about them. What you know about the alphas is almost nothing. Um, as far as knowing if you can turn them back, I mean, it's theoretically possible. I mean, theoretically, scientifically, it stands to reason that you could, like, if Silver can suppress it at that time period of the change, then possibly, probably, statistically, you should maybe, depending, be able to turn them back. I don't really Some work point. in maybes. And as much as normally it is my job to take bullets out of people, seems like it would be if we leave silver in them via the means of uh, a bullet, that maybe that would also work to suppress transformations. That's some real science right there. Anyway, I like this plan. Um, do, do we have a plan? We were thinking of going to the palace, attempting to infiltrate and take out Leticia and her uh, inner circle, with perhaps the hope that if we take out, you know, the mother, the, the alpha alpha, that it will perhaps undo the the curse the transformation not sure yet whether this is more a biological vector or if it is magical in means well but it just is working on that as we speak yeah um the the bite that i saw on uh, our good friend adam i believe he said his name was <laughs> there was there was definitely magic going on there so could be both could be just magic um periwinkle you've been awfully quiet Okay. Oh, well, um, I was trying to remember what Periwinkle sounded like. She sounds adorable, she just, just like that. She just sounds very sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. well, <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, I mean, especially since, um, you know, Agent Smith, you said it was so important that maybe I would stay back uh, in the cabaret and kind of keep up the, the barrier that I had put up to make sure that, that everyone in there stays safe while you guys all go to the palace. I mean, I want to be with you, but we do need to keep the rest of the people safe, so. I agree with that. You should, I think protecting the diplomats and the fennel and fire is going to be our top priority. And all the others, of course. Sure, them too. And if you could send me a picture of the wood that you set up that, so successfully, that would be really great. Just I can do that. Just as a side. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. Okay, great. All right, well, um, I'll, I'll go do that, and uh, let me know if you need anything. Uh, does Periwinkle's staff have silver on it, or her spear have silver on it? 
I'm assuming not. Pro no, I'm gonna say no. Okay, then I no. I would as she leaves, um, I would uh, walk to the door there and I'd say, "Listen, I know you said you weren't going to use it, and you don't have to, but if push comes to shove, you're gonna want something that's gonna be able to do." So anyway, take this, and I uh, hand her the my pistol. Um, oh, I'm not sure. It's loaded with silver yes. bullets, and my staff or my uh, my spear is magical. Is that gonna work? I don't know if that works against. It, would that work against werewolves? Well, there's. Uh, oh, are you asking me? Is that a me question? <laughs> <laughs> I was really asking Periwinkle if she knew. Uh, but... Oh. Uh, well, I'll interject it. Does. Yeah, she doesn't know. It does. Thank you. This was an A and B conversation. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, if it'll make you feel better, I'll take it. It would time. make me feel better if you would hold um, on to this. All right. Just in okay. case. I, I don't know with magical sticks if they... If you stab it, it doesn't do anything. Just, just shoot it. You're the expert. All right. Well, good luck, everyone. Uh, be safe. You too. Um, mm hmm? Periwinkle oh. goes off. Agent Smith, I'm not going to have to be uh, stationed somewhere by myself, uh, am I? This is a group mission, it sounds like, right? Well, I was thinking, um, they are going to be fighting in that pit. Maybe if you want to go and uh, tussle with them and see no i'm joking oh i thought you weren't being serious but i really i'm not really good at reading that so i'm glad you clarified thank you you're gonna to have to work on that if you can't tell what i'm being sarcastic that was sarcasm uh, okay okay i knew that so to the palace Yeah, um, I took a way, I found a way here that we might be able to stay off the main streets if we follow back that direction should avoid most of the pack. Probably for the best, it sounds like they are getting very active. Hmm. Uh, and we've got, <laughs> we've got they the guy- They drive by on their motorcycles! Uh, Adam in here is, is handcuffed and chained up. I know we're very sedated. And we yes. I know I handcuffed him to like a desk or something, but You did, yeah. yeah. You handcuffed him to a desk and, and Lefla um had had drugged him. Drugged him. Okay, cool. So that's that's gonna last for a while. All right. Um then yeah, I, I know I rolled real well on act under pressure to get back here. Um you so did. I'd like to try to take that same path as well as much as we can to sort of head i don't know if that's in the same direction as the um... uh it it is so the um the square like the plaza that you were in before with the cabaret in it um is on between you essentially and the palace um so you can make it as far as the cabaret once you reach there um you are i'm gonna ask you to roll again to kind of find another route okay if you would like to uh to do that yeah sure um so would that be another act under pressure or uh, uh yeah probably um yeah i think you i think you can can sort of lead uh theodosius and Lefla back to the plaza no problem um but i'm gonna have you uh roll to I think act under pressure is probably it. It's well. I guess it depends. It depends for me on the direction you're going to go with this. Are you just are you going and on your way there trying to kind of avoid obstacles as you go? Or are you trying to kind of map out a route before you start moving? Uh, given what I'm good at, probably the former. OK. Act under pressure. OK. Um, now, don't forget, you still have three hold on me from the last session. Oh, I know. Um, I'm going to take an additional plus one here, so I think you get a, another hold on me. Um, what is Using my... Uh, your move. Yeah. yeah, it's bottle it up. When you want, you can take a plus three... Oh, I guess I have to do... Oh, yeah, I can take up to a plus three bonus when I act under pressure. For each plus one you use, the keeper holds one. That many hold. okay. And this hold can be spent later to give you a negative one to any move except act under pressure. 
Yep. So. So I have three right now, and you're using. You're four. about to get four. Okay, so you're using one. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, didn't need it. Uh, that's a ten plus three is thirteen. Okay, so just as good as the last time. Um, yeah, I think with with that role, I, the other two of you, um, unless there's anything you want to do along the way, I you don't have to roll to make it there with Smith. Um, this is sort of his his bread and butter, his training. He's this all of his training is led up to this moment. Um, you sort of make your way, following close behind Agent Smith, um, ducking through alleyways and kind of weaving your way through uh, the dark corners of this city up toward the palace um, that you have seen in the distance. Um, a couple of times I think you stop on Agent Smith's command and kind of wait as you hear footsteps running by you and kind of howls in the distance, but no one no one sees you. Um, and thanks to Agent Smith's cool head and uh, great hand signals, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, you make it to the outskirts of the uh, small district of Lunaterra that holds the Moonset Palace, um, which is this large uh, three, sort of large three-story building, again, covered in this like gold plate, gold leaf, like a lot of the other fancy buildings in the city, um, very intricately designed with a large, um, like grassy sort of yard area out in the front of it. So you are sort of coming up to a stone wall, um, which is low enough that you could make it over, um, but high enough that you're not necessarily going to be able to just poke your head up. Um, there is one set of gates since you are, I assume, not just like walking up the main path. Yeah, right. that seems um, dumb. Else. So they're off of the main road, but on that uh, main road that leads up to this part, there is a set of gates, this wall surrounding it, and then past that, a large kind of open, open air yard, um, and the palace behind. All right. Um, Theo. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, motion like I'm going to boost Theo up so they can look over the wall. I'm assuming that left left I'd boost up probably still wouldn't have been able to see over the wall. That's the only reason I chose Theo. Uh, how tall How tall is left left? Um, how little are you? I imagine probably if they get up on their tippy twigs, um, like three feet. But I also think Aww. they could, you know like their their wingspan with some of the viney tendrils you know they might be able to lift themselves up and then it's just some leaves looking over the yeah. wall but if like smith was just like hoisting left lap no would not be enough you said it sounds super tall so like under 10 feet yeah uh hmm. probably eight feet tall oh okay at its point. yeah um then i'd then Never mind, Theo. Uh, <laughs> uh, I motioned to. I was ready, some. just to be clear. I'll boost you up. You can see what's on the other side. Sounds good to me. I imagine I can just like. Oh, uh, yeah, I think you could. I think you can just lift, Lefla. I don't. I don't imagine this resulting in a catastrophic failure. So I'm not going to make you roll for it. Okay. Uh, so Lefla. Um, Smith sort of boosts you up over the wall and you use your tendrils to kind of pull yourself up just just enough uh, so your uh, so your eyes are over the wall. Um, you can see out in front of you this large lawn expanse um, and the very large um, engraved doors to the front of the palace um, in front of you. Out on the lawn, um, there are several creatures that you see moving around. Um, they are very large, uh, sort of wolf-like humanoids, these figures that you have seen before um, in Adam and the ones that have kind of been running the streets. Um, these are a little bit bigger than the ones you have seen before. Um, they are walking upright on two feet and sort of patrolling as guards would patrol. Um, not necessarily just kind of running amok on the lawn. So there's about 
uh, there's probably three of them kind of out here on this front, kind of meandering around, kind of watching the, uh, the front doors. Okay, would this be a good place to read a bad situation, maybe? Sure, we'll see. It's certainly some of those questions could Oh yeah, come that's here. the one that's like, what, what's my best way in? And... Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so can... as you peek over the wall. Yes. I was gonna ask if, if what I'm doing can be considered helping out. Um, and if I can try to help out with the role. Um, or yeah. is what I'm doing too, too basic? No, I think so. I mean, I, yeah. You can certainly try. How about that? Yeah, no, I think uh, giving giving Lefla a good vantage point um, would count. So Smith, you'll roll plus cool. Okay. Um, so that's a seven. So they get a, you get a plus one to your roll. Uh, your help grants not a plus one to your roll, but you also expose yourself to trouble or danger. So okay. if... I'll keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, so Lefla, you'll roll plus sharp, and you get a plus one from Smith. Well, I rolled snake eyes. Oof. For a total of four. So on a miss, you might misread the situation, or you might reveal tactical details to your enemies, which means the keeper can ask the above questions of you. Okay. <laughs> but I get um, XP. Yay. XP. <laughs> Mark that good, good XP. Yeah. I um I don't think I'm gonna ask you any questions. Um, but on that miss, and I think on Smith's also exposing himself to danger. Um, I think as you are, Smith, I think as you are going to, uh, sort of, you're holding, kind of holding Lefla, um, above you and you kind of shift your weight and I think you shift too far and that ankle, man, that leg, uh, that you sort of tweaked when you tried to kick that door down and it was, oh, it was barricaded. Uh, really sort of twinges and I think you sort of stumble to the side throwing Lefla off balance. I don't think you drop them or anything like that but I think Lefla not expecting it kind of lets out a squeak <laughs> or some sort of uh, surprised noise and um, ducks down very quickly as uh, some of the creatures inside their ears perk up and yeah. you can hear couple of them kind of muttering to themselves and then footsteps as they kind of scramble around and kind of are walking towards the wall um a couple of them to see what the source of that noise was oh, shit son of a bitch guess we're going in loud <laughs> oh, oh 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 we're not being quiet anymore uh well, why is that well i'm pretty sure they're about to come over that wall <laughs> cool 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 are you going to see one kind of come up um, a few feet off towards that main gate? You see a snout kind of poke through a little bit. I just as have my like SMG like pointed up to the wall. So as soon as they come within sight, I'm just ready to sucker them. All right. The you corner. don't think they have seen you yet, but one of them is definitely at that front gate kind of looking and watching that main road. And you can hear on the other side of the wall, Lefla, I think, since you were the one that sort of knew where they were already, you can hear these uh, heavy uh, kind of footfalls. I would like the other side. I would like to attempt to make us invisible. Okay. Is that a spell slinger thing or is that a use magic? That's I'm I'm not sure if it's use magic or big magic. It's not on the use magic list. Uh, <laughs> um hmm. the closest I can get is, that I can think of is do something that's beyond human limitations, like you know, not be seen. <laughs> but that if you tracks. think it's big magic, I can uh, go with that too. Because you are the spell slinger, and I think you're inherently magical, I think I'll give you a little. You have a little bit more leeway, I think, with use magic than everyone else. Yeah, you can go ahead and try. Okay. Um, for for that, because it's fun. Uh, so roll plus weird. Okay. Um, and while this is happening, I Theo is obviously panicking. Like, why is that? Oh, they're coming around, and the Theo is like, <gasps> and then he doesn't do anything in particular to help with this casting. He just kind of mumbles and tosses some leaves in the air, but forgets one of his things that he's supposed to do. Ooh, but he still does okay. He gets a 10 total. Okay, a 10 total. So the magic works without issue. Um, so you're going to say, do one thing that is beyond your normal spell slinger limitations. 
Um, so I think as these footsteps are coming towards you and Smith is uh, cocking his gun, getting ready to go, this um, sort of wave of energy rolls out from uh, from Theo to the two of you and kind of envelops all of you in Hold this your breath. like shadow almost it's as if kind of like the shadows from the from the wall and that are being cast from like the buildings around kind of cover you um and uh all of a sudden you don't know where your hands went they're definitely there but you can't see them in front of your face um and for the moment you're very hard to see did you do this all right. Try not to breathe. Don't move. How long is this going to last for? I don't know. And as you're having this conversation, uh, you hear this scraping sound on the other side of the wall um, and this growling from above you um, as you see this large kind of wolf head poke out from over the wall, holding onto it uh, with his claws, kind of looking, looking. I'd like to just like... Just bend down as quiet as can. Like if there's a rock or something at my feet, or like a branch or something. Um, yeah, I said. I think I said last time it was cobblestone roads. So yeah, probably like some broken. Yeah, if there's like that. a piece of a brick or something, I just take it yeah. and just kind of like chuck it like twenty yards, just like down the wall in the other direction, like perpendicular, so it doesn't like go into his line of sight, but kind of down so the no there's noise like further down that way. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna make you roll to throw a rock. Um, so he, you kind of very carefully um, in the shadows pick up a, uh, a kind of broken piece of cobblestone from the alley and toss it and it um, a little ways down kind of bounces off the side of a building and kind of clatters down another alleyway. Um, and you can hear this kind of growl and this sniff um, as the head turns and this very large, much, much larger than Adam was. Um, uh, wolf creature uh, sort of launches themselves directly over you, lands in the grass and on all fours kind of takes off running uh, down that alley. All right. Let's go! Let's go. Um, I'll, go. I'm gonna, I guess, boost uh, Theo and Lefla over the wall. And yeah, then, I guess I'm already up there and all vines down to try and help yeah pull. help help me up <laughs> okay uh yeah again I think I think you guys can just do this so Smith uh stretching out stretching out that leg just a little bit um boosting everybody over the wall and then with with Lefla's help and with those kind of extending vines the three of you make it over this wall and kind of land uh, quietly and in shadow on the other side um you can see to your right about uh 20 yards away or so is that main gate um the creature that was previously looking through it has kind of gone off farther in that other direction along the other wall um assuming that it's uh, that its comrade had this wall covered and then one of them is left kind of standing um right near the main these large kind of engraved doors, the main entrance into the palace across the yard. I'm guessing they're probably in the palace. And we see each other. I, I can't remember if your description said that we're all invisible to each other or not. Uh, I think you... I think you have a vague idea of where each other is. Um, it's it's less just like being able to see straight through someone and more kind of like these shadows are kind of helping to mask your presence, especially Theo, I think, kind of having a, a handle on how this works. But I think you all have kind of a vague idea of where where each other are. Um, okay. Cool. Um, the, the, sure. All right. Just trying to keep this up as long as you can. Mm -hmm. And if things go bad... Stay behind me. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's my plan. And just kind of low and slow across the grass up towards the uh, entrance to the the palace. Okay. All right. So the three of you um, 
crouching down following Smith's lead and with the help of the uh, the shadows and Lefla sort of looking like you belong in the lawn a little bit from far away. <laughs> anyway, um, low and slow kind of making your way. Um, I'm going to have you all to roll act under pressure. Okay. For the sneaks. As tempting as I do, I give you more points. I think because you're like sort of invisible, and that's mm, plus one for invisible for invisible. I rolled a six, so Ooh. plus one seven. Okay. I got up to a nine. Okay. I rolled a six and a five, <laughs> so that's an eleven plus two is a thirteen. Oh, I can't wait to take things. Fourteen. Away from you. Man, if I'd taken the plus three, that would have been a 17. Wow, good thing you didn't. Pretty sure that's the highest you could roll in this game. Mm -hmm. It seems too high. <laughs> you get up to an 18. <laughs> get a 12, you have a plus three, and you take the plus three bonus. Yeah. And then if someone's helping you, how much can you benefit from a help? Uh, Is it just, just like one? Plus, just, one. just one. Yeah. So you, you could get a 19. All right. That's my goal for this campaign. Okay, now. but you don't need it. You only need a 10. <laughs> Aspire higher, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so that's good. So two two partial successes and Smith is Smith is major success. Um I think I think that's fine. So you all uh make your way very slowly, kind of creeping the shadows, coalescing around you across the lawn, um, coming up on the main entrance. Is that where you're headed? Mm -hmm. All right, so headed toward the main entrance of the palace. Um, there is sort of one large wolf man um, off to the left side <coughs> of the doors, kind of watching the comings and goings. He does not see you, but you're getting close. And we're still invisible? Yeah. Or cloaked? Do I have any inkling of how long this is lasting? Like, is it becoming more tense for me? To hold on to it um i i think it is less about your connection to it and more about the fact that you are that the magic is using the shadows that are being cast outside to cloak you and so if you get into a well-lit area or uh somewhere inside it is probably going to be much less effective are there any windows on ground level sure uh let's see there are uh so off to essentially you have this kind of front entryway with the large doors and then the building kind of cuts back a little bit mm. um and then in those setback kind of rooms there are a uh a couple of windows on either side motion towards the windows and say window door Window. I can try to get the scene through the window with my multi tool. Theo nods and then realizes that he can't really be seen that well. <laughs> yeah, uh, go up to the window and then you said, Leffel, you said that you have a tool, a multi tool to might. Yep. One harm, hand, useful, small. Oh, so nice. used to do useful things. Absolutely. That's really cool. We just remove the window from the, <laughs> from the wall. <laughs> So you guys are already sort of on this uh, left side. So if you cut off, um, continuing to follow the shadows off towards this left side of the building, that's kind of set back a little bit from the entryway. Um, left, uh, what does your what does your multi tool do to do to a window? What are you um, trying to do? I mean, probably flick out the little blade thing and just try and you know, reach through and get the catch that's keeping it locked. Okay, I'm gonna have you roll to act under pressure. Not kick the window's ass. <laughs> <laughs> you could try that if this doesn't work. Oh, that is a 10. Uh, that's nice. very good. You do what you set out to do. So uh, you see Lefla um, pull out this multi-tool and kind of flip to a small uh, bladed part of it, kind of extend their uh, their vines upward and very quickly sort of just flick. You hear a click, the latch slides open. 
and you are able to kind of slide the window up, and you have done it. Easy. Good job. I'll uh, I'll climb in first, assuming it's low enough to the ground that we can all climb in. Um, uh, yeah. I'll I'll climb in first and then uh, slice the pie. I don't know if that works for coming in a window, but up <laughs> down the hallway to make sure nobody's coming. Um, okay. So you are, um, as you go in, Smith, you are kind of at the end of what is like a very long hallway. Mm, okay. Uh, there is uh, off to your left kind of a set of doors and then farther down the hallway there's some other doors but you're essentially at the end of what is this very long extended hallway um, going back it's so all there's clear. really no pie to slice <laughs> okay well as long as it's all clear then I yep there's no one in here currently no one in the hallway all clear let's go Theo as quietly as possible climbs into the window which means he only wheezes a little bit Need to log you some more hours in the gym. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So no problem. The three of you climb into this window. Um, this you are now inside. Um, this building is relatively well lit. Um, so the uh, the the magic of invisibility, um, I think, is going to going to probably not help you out so much anymore. Um, but you did sort of just break into a palace without incident. So well done <laughs> on all accounts. Um, so you are at the end of this long hallway. Um, again, there are these all along the, the walls of the hallway. There are these murals and kind of intricate designs and painting. And everything is gold leafed. Everything that they could like gold leaf, they did um, in this city. And then to your immediate left, there is... Um, kind of this set of large wooden doors um, and then a, a couple of I don't know, I guess a couple of yards down the hallway at intervals there are two more doors and then at the very very far end of the hallway is another large kind of set of doors. You got doors everywhere. You got doors to the left, doors to the right only one set of doors to the right. Hey Ryan but, yeah. I look at the doorknobs and be like they even put gold leaf on the doorknobs that just they seems did. in Practical. I mean, it kind of crunches when you. Pretty goody. Perhaps this planet has a lot of gold. I guess so. But uh, something uh, I would like to do is go to one of these smaller, you know, less ornate doors and open it to check in. And I would like to use the mundane's "oops" ability. Okay. If you stumble across something important, tell the keeper. You will find something important and useful, but not necessarily related to your immediate problems. Okay. And so. <laughs> I love this ability. So, is that a once per session thing, or is that just like you can I, do? There doesn't seem to be a Why? limit on it. I can just yeah. do it whenever. <laughs> it's important and useful, but nerf. okay. Important and useful, but not necessarily related to your problem. Okay, so if you go to the uh, the door closest to you, it is a pretty simple set of wooden doors. Um, not not ornate like the rest of them. Um, as you um grab the the knobs on this door um they're kind of cold to the touch um and you kind of pop the door open just a little bit um, peek inside there's no one inside um but this seems to be a sort of storeroom um there are lots of crates and kind of barrels around um, but there is this natural kind of cold that is emanating from this room um, as if this would be a very good place to store things that need to be cold. I'm trying to come up with something that you would find in here. Um, you found a freezer. Okay. Um, I think there is, uh, I'm saying important and useful. Um, I think there, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, supplies in here probably not a lot of stuff that you could take with you for any length of time um and then across the uh back wall i think is this large um almost like a wine fridge kind of deal and i think it's just this large kind of shelf of like bottles of different kind of colors and labels and things like that um all right good to know that this is here 
um, I'll you know close the door again. Just like he's a cooler, freezer, lots of pantry supplies. Did not see any bodies being kept in there. All right. Uh, let's check the door across the hall then. Oh right. All right. So you want to go across the hall? Yeah. Okay, so down a little ways and across the hall, there's just one door to your right. Um, you, you go to it, you open it. Just pop it open. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't know that was a question. I thought you said oh, you sorry. open it. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I would like to open the door. You yeah. open it. Um, so, Smith, you uh, very quietly sort of pop this door open um so this door would be going in the direction of the entrance that you saw before um to mm -hmm. your right so this door open um on the other side there is a very large hall um which looks to be probably off of the entryway um and in there there is this large sort of double staircase which looks like it goes up to another floor hmm it's going to take a long time to search this whole place. I could try something. Please. Okay. Looks around. There aren't many loose objects. So seems structurally stable. Nothing bad could really happen. And he's going to try and use magic to observe another place or time. I'm going to try and observe where we're at, but at another time and see who I can see coming through here. And where they went. Okay. All right. So roll plus weird. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Twelve. Okay. The magic works without issue. Choose your effect. So uh, observe another place or. Oh, sorry. Thirteen. I have a plus okay. one to observe. Sorry. Well, in that case. <laughs> also, uh, um, what Lefla and Smith see, like Theo, like says this to himself. Clearly, like, not very confident, rolls up his sleeve and quickly pulls out what looks like a, a needle on, like, a rubber band and just, like, quickly adds a few lines of ink into his skin on his arm as he casts. Right. And then, sorry, sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, so you see, uh, you see Theo uh, do this, adding a little bit on to his uh, already existing tattoos. Um, and... Uh, Theo, you feel this uh, kind of pull from you as the magic um, more in control, I think, than you're used to. Um, kind of spreads out across the uh, the building in front of you, essentially kind of stopping at the walls, and you can feel um, your consciousness kind of going up the stairs and up uh, to the next couple of floors. And um, it's almost like a vision um you kind of see yourself uh back in time just a little bit um it seems to be kind of right before everything went wrong here um and you get these flashes of different places in the palace you can see um the the council of orcs, the the eight of them essentially that are the the elected uh, council members of the city, uh, greeting visitors at the front door, taking them upstairs, um, showing them the visitors' quarters, taking them up to the final floor, um, and meeting with them in the council chambers that are up there, um, and then there is a a kind of lurch and you find yourself still in the past um but right before uh you arrived maybe a few hours um and you can see the uh the woman who you now know to be letitia kind of following the same um the same route kind of coming in the front door with her pack making her way up to the second floor going through a few of the rooms there and then up to the third floor and into those same council chambers and so you have a a pretty good feel for kind of the layout of the building. And you also get the impression that if she's going to be somewhere, that's probably where she is. <sighs> okay. He rolls his sleeve back down. Uh, 
I think I know where they are. Um, also, um, they came as official visitors here, seems like. The, 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 the Letitia and, and the werewolves, um, they were welcomed in the front door, like expected guests, I think. Um, but uh, if she's anywhere, uh, if she's not there now, she was recently uh, third floor council chambers. Chambers, I, I, I would know the door if I saw it. All right, we'll lead the way then. Okay. So I sure hope that you are keeping that needle sanitary. Of of course. Mm hmm. I am. Yes. With magic. Magic fire. Yep. I'm leading now. Okay. Okay. So you know Theo. Um. The staircase that is out in uh, out in this hall that Smith has just uh, poked his head into is the main staircase that is going to lead you up to where they went. It's up, up this way. I'm not sure if we really just want to stroll on up or if we have a side plan or we could just stroll. I think we'll decide once we get up there. Um... Okay. But perhaps a stealthy stroll? Quiet stroll. Right. Okay. Right, and so we do. <laughs> we do. All right. Uh, so you uh, quietly sort of make your way through this door out into this large hall, um, trying your best to keep your, uh, especially uh, those of you that are wearing shoes, I guess, your footsteps um, from echoing through this large hall, um, turning quickly to go up this uh, this large staircase up to the landing on the second floor. Um, with little to no issue, as you make it up to the, uh, the second floor landing, uh, Theo, this all looking very familiar to you, you sort of push open these doors um, and you find yourself in a narrower hallway than you were in before, um, kind of facing a wall with a very large mural on it and a hallway that cuts off both to uh, your left and your right. And I know where to go or I don't? Uh, I think you, you're you under the impression that this, um, this hallway sort of wraps around um, with several rooms in between and then on the other side you can get to another set of stairs that will lead you up to that third floor. I attempt to convey this with hand gestures. Okay, what do you do? So left or right? Oh, it, it comes together. It's, it's a circle. Okay, you could have just said that. I thought we were being stealthy! Also, speak quietly, you know. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Alright, do you go right. left or right? R right. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so, you, the three of you, kind of taking uh, the, the right facing hallway, um, making your way around the corner, again, down this very, very long hallway. There are a few doors on your left side um, leading into one of these, Theo, you know to be like a kind of guest quarters area where some guests would stay, um, which is the first door on your left, and as you pass by it, um, I think you hear some kind of almost like snoring, I think, very loudly. Um, maybe some grumbling kind of coming from inside that room. Are they lupine snores? I don't think you know. Not doing little awoos as they sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that'd be really cute. I just like gesture towards the doorknob like in here, around. See, so, yeah, I was just like, oh, go, oh. Oh, I don't know. If you want to check, I don't really want to. But it's up to you. I check. 
Okay, you just open the door? It, like, quietly and slowly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, Theo and Lefla are sort of waiting out in the hallway. Uh, Smith, you uh, very quietly sort of nudge the door open. Um, you can see inside um, kind of scattered across a, a large bed and uh, the floor in the several areas. Um, about seven of these uh, wolf-like creatures, smaller ones, um, much like Adam, Adam-sized, if you will, um, kind of asleep. And then in uh, one corner of the room, sort of sitting up in a chair, um, another one much larger, um, kind of with its head back against the wall, kind of dozing off. Um, but it doesn't look like the alpha, that, that doesn't look like Letitia. No, it doesn't look like Letitia. Um, it definitely looks like one of the ones that probably came through with her. Um, the rest of them, as far as you can tell from Theo's description and your experience, are, are ferals. Okay. Then I just slowly close it. Is there a way for me to lock the door from the outside? <laughs> um. I mean, they're... The lock is on the inside of the door, so if they wanted to get out, they could probably just unlock it. Okay, fine. <coughs> Unless you wanted to like jam the door somehow, that but sounds it opens loud. inside. Yeah. Lots of doors. Yo, shrugs. I could, I could try and lock them in with magic. What are the odds that's going to be really loud? Not if I do it well. You're two for two right now. I don't want to take those odds. I disagree with the statistics, but yes, you're right. I also would really rather not muck it up right here. That is not how statistics work, but I agree we should probably just close the door and move on. I'm a scientist. Do neither of you understand regression to the mean? No. It's, it's this way, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, I leave the door then. All right. So you just very quietly close the door, um, and you uh make your way, continuing down this hallway. Um, there are two other doors on your left. Um, that you pass. They are quieter. Than, uh, than the first door um, and around the uh, that final corner you can see a, another staircase um, leading up another floor up oh. alright slowly up the stairs then alright slowly up the stairs as you make your way up that final staircase uh, you can hear uh, a a sort of quiet conversation coming from the landing above you. Can we understand what they're saying? Uh, right now I think it just sounds uh, like a like a sort of whispered conversation. You would have to get closer if you wanted to make anything out. I guess it's the direction we're going, so I get closer okay um so you creep your way up the stairs um you can hear these two sort of low kind of rumbling voices uh they're not discussing anything very important um, i think one of them is probably like complaining about lunch and how they didn't get enough to eat um and the other one is kind of shushing them saying like uh, you know, there is more coming. Um, you know, we're only getting started, so you won't, he says, you won't be hungry for long. Sounds like there are more wolves upstairs. <laughs> Lock and load. You got it. <laughs> Perhaps as we uh, go loud, 
the oh, you got the dump two bars stairway behind us so nothing can get up. Yeah, yeah, I, c- I can do that. I have another idea. This hallway's circular. <laughs> Could you make a noise down one side of the hall? They go that direction, we go up the stairs after they've come down. Do you want me to do that with magic or with normal human means? Literally anything you have, I've got almost nothing that I can do that with. Right now I have a knife and my gun. I'm just going... I just thought that left a like tearing off a twig, but, but that would be like breaking off a finger. <laughs> it's, I'll just throw my finger. Hold on. <laughs> Ouch. There would be harm involved with that one. Yeah. Physically okay. and probably emotionally. Yeah. But I thought it's like if the if the area the hallway's <laughs> circular and the stairs are like the top of the circle that we go down like the left side that we didn't come down before, and you make a noise on the other side where the somehow if we can like throw something down the hallway or rig something to happen on the other side where like the sleeping wolves were, and then they'll run down the stairs towards the noise and we go up the stairs. Oh, are there stairs on both sides? Is that what you're saying? They'll go down other stairs and the stairs that we're on? Are we on the stairs? <laughs> we're on the stairs. You we are go- on the stairs currently. So okay. the stairs come down. So essentially, it's like a rectangle right here. And okay. you came in this side, right? Mm-hmm. You went around, and the stairs are on the opposite side. So the stairs are in the center mm-hmm. of the side that you're on right now. But the oh, whole they hallway is like a big... Yeah. Get it. Yeah. yeah. So we like duck around the corner, make a noise down the other hall. They come down the stairs and go down that hall. We go up the stairs. I will attempt to do that with magic. <laughs> okay, so what? Let's see. Is I want to see if I succeed first before I say what I want to try and do, maybe. Okay, or do you want fine. me to say first? Uh... <clears throat> He's going to try and throw his voice. Okay. But like around some corners and like on a place he can't see, <laughs> like magical throwing I think voice. That's fine. Do something okay. that's beyond your limitations. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so okay. roll this weird. <laughs> well, that's a seven. So it works imperfectly. Okay. I choose my effect, do the one thing, and a glitch. All right. So if your effect is to, uh, we'll say, do something beyond your limitations, you're gonna try to throw your voice, uh, although you're not a trained ventriloquist, um, around the opposite corner uh, from you, but you get a glitch. Um, I mean, I don't need the sound to last very long, right? So we could say the effect is of short duration, or is that like too short and won't even grab their attention? (gasps) I'm gonna say it has a problematic side effect, because that sounds more fun. Okay. Uh, I wanted to do the thing. All right, it has a problematic side effect. Yeah, and that just says the keeper will decide what effect that glitch has. Oh, she will. (laughs) All right, so uh, you all kind of, do you all come off the stairs? I'm assuming you're backing down the stairs Mm -hmm. and kind of hiding around one of the corners. Okay, Uh, so you back down the stairs and hide around one of the the corners at the end of the hallway, um, and Theo sort of, concentrates and uh, sends out this kind of pulse of energy and around the corner uh, you hear what kind of sound do you make <laughs> the first thing that he thinks of oh bugger up oh, who put this wall there all right so around the corner you just hear another very frustrated Theo um, <laughs> who has apparently run into a wall of some sort um, and from up the stairs, uh, you hear the conversation kind of cease, um, and then a little bit of muttering as one of uh, these creatures, um, again, a much larger one uh, than you have dealt with, kind of comes down, uh, stops, kind of looks around, and then goes to follow the sound. Um, One of them is remaining at the top of the stairs. Mm, they could have gone better. You have a very short time frame to act in. I 
guess we just go and deal with one wolf at the top instead of two. Okay. I can attempt to hit him or slap manacles on him. What do you think would be best? Either. Anything that keeps him from making noise. You got bit last time you tried to sedate I uh, manacles, maybe? We're moving. Okay, great. All right, with no plan. <laughs> you, I'm fishing uh, out some of the sedative and not being too careful with the dosage I'm preparing. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, Leffler kind of pulling out a, a, a <clears throat> large syringe out of their bag. Smith, I assume, pulling out a gun. Uh, and I, Theo maybe pulling out his anxiety. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. always out. <laughs> I've got a big knife, but... Um... I assume that wasn't silvered for me as part of our provision yeah. request. Okay, yeah, then yeah, bullet. I guess my gun. All right, you have a gun. He uh, was preparing so... to cast magic if necessary. Okay, so uh, with this, as those large, you hear those uh, large kind of heavy footsteps make their way to the end of the hallway across from you. And as soon as he crests around the corner, the three of you uh, following Smith's lead, Probably. I think Leffel is actually going to try and rush oh. ahead first because okay. I have a mundane move that I think would require me to do so. Okay, so Smith kind of around the side of your hip, you feel this kind of brush past you as Leffel kind of scurries up the stairs in front of you. Wait, you uh, I'll sedate them and then you will be easier for your time though. <laughs> Smith following behind and Theo oh, bringing my knee. Oh, <laughs> so many stairs. <laughs> Are you all right? Are you all right? It's Who fine. built this pal as a fitness instructor? <laughs> yeah. Um, you make your way up the stairs again, and uh, Leffler getting there first, cresting the top. Um, a, a little bit surprised, you see this large uh, kind of uh, bipedal wolf creature um, in sort of the corner, um, kind of leaning up against the wall. And as you crest over the top of the stairs, um, he kind of starts and lets out this growl at you. Um, you have the jump on him a little bit. What do you want to do? Yep. So I'm using my what could go wrong move. Okay. Whenever you charge into immediate danger without hedging your bets, hold two, and then I can spend the hold to do a few things. Okay. Um, so I'm basically just running syringe first, <laughs> trying to jab it into him. <laughs> do you have to roll for the move or you just do this? Um, I just do it, and one oh of the things gosh. is uh, I can take plus two forward on an act under pressure roll, which I okay. assume is what I will be rolling. Yeah, um, so I'm going to say, I was just on some exciting music as Leffler rushes in. Um, so, the uh, uh, Leffler sort of crests uh, over at the top of the stairs, sort of syringe out, and without even really thinking too hard or reacting sort of charges straight towards the soul fan with the syringe out. Yeah, go ahead and uh, we'll do act under pressure because um, I don't I don't quite think this is an, an attack necessarily. Yep. Oh, that is good because that is, um, that works out to a 10. I rolled a seven plus two from my move plus one cool. Okay, uh, so you do what you set out to do. Um, and so little Lefla, um, uh moving forward and jabbing the syringe in and uh, making up for the last time when you got chomped, sort of hitting your mark uh, very perfectly. Um, yeah, you do it. Um, you stab him with a needle and uh, push the uh, the sort of plunger in, and the uh, the creature kind of growls and like yanks their arm back um, with the the syringe still sort of like sticking in, um, and it does not have an immediate effect, um, but you're confident that you gave him a large enough dose that uh, he is probably on borrowed time. Uh, but there is this large Smith and, uh, and Theo as you kind of make it up to the top of the stairs. Behind Lefla, you see Lefla um, victoriously kind of in the shadow of this very large creature who has kind of thrown their head back and let out this huge growl um, and is going to swipe down at Lefla um, uh, for stabbing I, him with a needle. Can I intervene and try to protect Lefla? Because there's a do? protect someone move. I'd like to just, uh, I guess I'd like to run up if, if I can get up the stairs with my bum knee in time uh, and just kind of grab Lefla and just sort of pull them down the stairs, kind of interposing myself uh, between them. Um, 
Yeah, my... yeah, you can you can definitely try to do that. Um, so roll plus tough. I think that leg at this point on the third floor is giving you some trouble. Um, so you're spending gonna... a hold against me. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna have a minus one. Okay, that'll just make this a straight roll then. Double sixes. You are fucking kidding me. <laughs> Twelve. All right. Uh, so where were these last week? <laughs> Uh, so you do this, so you on protect someone, uh, choose an extra effect okay. from the list. So I'm going to suffer the harm that Lefla, or I, I may suffer some of the harm that Lefla has, or yes. all of it. Some um, or all of it. Well, I can also use some of my what could go wrong uh, hold to reduce oh, someone's gosh. harm suffered by one. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so Smith, what's your extra effect? Uh, I'm going to choose all impending dangers now focused on me. All right, and um, you want to use your your move to to reduce Smith's harm? Yeah, if he's going to take any, otherwise I'll okay. hold on to the hold. Yeah, he he is going to take some. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Lefla, I think, very aware of what is happening around you right now, as Smith kind of comes up behind you and tries to <clears throat> uh, pull you out of the way. Um, you are able to kind of help cause enough of a distraction that the creature in the moment is very confused about what is happening right now and kind of swipes down um smith you are gonna take uh minus one for uh for left kind of helping and i think uh with the dosage of of drugs that you gave him already i think his head is kind of starting to swim a little bit uh, you're gonna take three harm so I take none. And you have three armor, so you're going to take none. Um, so we're going to take zero, a zero harm wound, um, which I think maybe uh, he slices through your jacket. And one of your pockets is now unusable. Well, my jacket's made out of nanofiber, so it, I think it absorbs the impact and then it sort of just like restitches itself together um, immediately after being slashed. Okay. But it looks ugly now. My shirt isn't made out of it, so my shirt's probably actually torn up. But the jacket is... Uh, okay, we got a big, ugly hole in your shirt now yeah, yeah. from the mean wolf man. All right, so Smith, uh, taking kind of the brunt of this unfazed, you can get a new shirt, <laughs> um, kind of pulling Lefla out of the way and back towards the stairs. Theo, from behind the two of them, what are you doing? I just sidestep so that I'm directly behind Smith <laughs> and I'm just gonna go okay and turn around and I'm going to use magic to um, bar any werewolves from coming up these stairs. Okay, go ahead and roll plus weird. Oh, <laughs> That's a five total. Okay, uh, on a miss. I you, lose control of the mess. You lose control of the magic. This never ends well. Bye. Uh, also a so, reminder to the audience who may not know, um, Theo's magic is based in entropy. Force magic. All right, so uh, Theo, I think, um, sort of inspired by uh, Periwinkle's previous action in kind of- Oh yeah, I was gonna say, he looks at his phone did. like, how did, okay, great. <laughs> uh, what, trying to uh, trying to sort of replicate without a lot of knowledge about how she did it, um, these, uh, these arcane, magical, whatever kind of magic it is you do, uh, runes, um, to bar the, the stairway from, from the werewolves. Um, you start to conjure this barrier and very quickly realize that it is very much out of your comfort zone and you very quickly sort of start to feel you feel your hands start to shake and the energy start to swell in them uh, and this has happened to you before um where you were trying to do something sort of very small and very very quickly lost control and so i think in that moment and that feeling again of oh no it's happening again, not again. I think you panic, and from uh, behind you, Smith and Lefla, this huge, loud blast, uh, like a cannon shot, goes off. 
um, and there is this huge blast of kind of force energy from Theo. It doesn't hit either of you because it goes out uh, towards the the staircase and the door, but I think from around the corner at the bottom of the stairs, you hear this loud yelp as if you have hit something, um, and everyone heard that. Everyone in the building heard that. And Theo, after this sort of blast goes off from you and you kind of feel the energy leave you, um, you're kind of shaken and a little bit woozy uh, from that. And then from around the bottom of the stairs, you see a snout poking through. Were you holding the glyph upside down again? No, but um, we have company. I do not have that many sedatives left. Let, let's get to move on. Uh, werewolf south of the top of the stairs. I'm just going to open fire on the werewolf in front of us then. Okay. Try yeah, to carve so, us a path. Yeah, go ahead. Roll to uh, kick some ass. Kick that ass. No, I'm not. Well, no. <laughs> That's only a f uh, six. Oh, that's very bad. That is bad. It's a bad thing that you did. Um, you get your ass kicked instead. Yep. Uh, so I think distracted by this sort of loud blast and this ringing in your ears from whatever Theo has done behind you, um, you go to open fire. Um, but I think the uh, the large wolf man sort of right up on you as he has just kind of uh, made a big swipe at you, makes another one, and sort of pushes the... Uh, the gun to the side and so the bullets go off into the wall and uh, uh, brings up these like large claws and uh, brings them down onto your shoulder and just digs them into you and kind of latches onto you um, you're going to take four harm okay so from that reduced to one so I hope for you um, because you're invincible I guess all yes. right. Um, so, Smith, um, you got to feel them latch onto you, and they are in there, like holding onto you. Good. Uh, let's see. Left claw. Yep. So, You're right there. As they are, as the big bad wolf is holding on to uh, Smith, there's, uh, you know, their stationary target. This can't go very wrong. Lefla kind of mutters to themselves, oh, must I do everything myself? And pulls out their hunting rifle that they just okay. concealed on their person uh, and is going to attempt to shoot the wolf with the silver bullets that they've loaded in ahead of time. Okay, yeah, roll to kick some ass. Um, That is an eight. Okay, so you, let's see, uh, you inflict harm on each other, I think is the only thing that happens. Uh, so uh, this uh, large sort of wolfman has got one claw, one very large sort of clawed hand into Smith. You turn around and are able to get a shot off um, and it uh, knocks them sort of in the shoulder um, and they go stumbling back from you, but not before kind of slashing across you. That is a three harm. Okay. To you, uh, negated by any armor that you may have. Nope, I have no armor. All I... right, so Lefla, uh takes a, a very large hit kind of across the chest, and you hear this cracking as, like, vines and stuffs. Um, these twigs sort of crack and leave these large slash marks. How uh, how often can I try to protect some? I guess we don't, I don't really know how, like, reactions are, like, can I? You can. Yeah, can I, I mean, just... you're right there, so... Because, geez, that's a lot of harm for Lefla. They're big claws, man. Yeah, if I can, I'm trying to redirect any attacks towards me because I've got all this armor. Um, and also, okay. for the record, my rifle does three harm, so I don't know if this wolf is even still up or not. Uh, it looks very bad. Uh, so, well, we'll move on from there. But yeah, moving moving forward, that sort of protects someone. I mean, as long as you're kind of in close quarters with somebody, you can always try. Okay. Uh, so is it Just too late yell. for me to try to take uh, some of the harm to myself, or? Uh, go yeah, go go ahead and roll. Okay. That is plus tough to protect someone. That's a seven. Okay, uh, so you protect them. Okay, so I'm going to for this one, um, we'll say two harm to Lefla and one to Smith. Um, so 
Luffley can lose one of the uh, one of the harm you just took. Um, as Smith is still kind of trying to, I think, push Lefla behind him. Um, as you are very much up in this creature space, but this uh, gunshot goes off, kind of catching the uh, the creature in the shoulder, and they stumble back on kind of letting go of Smith. Um, I think the sedative coupled with the pain that they are feeling now finally starting to take over um, as the other one, Theo, you see is kind of coming around the corner and up the stairs toward you. Okay, but the one that was that has his claws currently in Smith is falling over. Is fall is falling over. Yeah, I think okay. they're they might go to sleep. They might bleed out. Oh man, oh they man, might happen oh at the same time. But um, yeah. oh man, as long as I'm only focusing on the one thing. Okay, all right. Um, uh, it's running I, at you, growling viciously. I am going to. Use my combat magic. I'm going to shoot a blast of my chaos magic at it. No, oh, I don't want to kill it. At the... Nope, I'll shoot it. Yeah, I'll hit it. Oh man, okay. I hope it doesn't die. All right, you shoot it. So you, that is, you roll to kick some ass, but you roll with weird? Yeah. All right, so roll plus weird. Just, just to be clear. This uh, this is gonna be three harm. That's messy. Oh dear! No, it's not. It's a five total. <laughs> we cannot roll above a five when are we are trying to attack sure somebody. You're all XPs. I am. It's as Pretty soon failures. as we try to attack anyone, we start rolling like shit. It is. I don't know. Theo is flying into to... basic one one. Theo is flying into an actual like anxiety attack. All right, so uh, Theo, um, you go to let off this force blast, um, but I think you are still very shaken from what has just happened and kind of off your game and maybe a little bit woozy, and you go to uh, send this blast out, and it just doesn't. You can feel maybe a little bit of energy in your hands, and it just kind of sputters and dies as this thing uh, sort of runs on all fours up the stairs and just tackles you full on. Um, you're also going to take three harm. Cool, I take all of that. Great, y'all need to get some armor. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm a wizard. <sighs> I'm a wizard. Uh, so you're going to take that that three harm. Um, and I think as Smith and Lefla, as this, um, this large creature uh, that Lefla has just dosed with a bunch of uh, tranquilizers and then shot with a hunting rifle uh, sort of falls in front of you. You hear this loud sort of growling noise, probably coupled with a scream or a yell or something on Theo's part as you turn around and one of them is on top of Theo sort of pinning him into the ground. Oh, shit. Um... Do you have, I assume, Leffle, you don't have anything for this? Uh, Not really. Um, oh, I do I'll have something. Okay. I do have something I can use for this. I have a move called Leave No One Behind. Um, so okay. in combat, when you help someone escape, which I kind of interpret that as what I'm going to try to do right now, sure. um, I roll plus sharp on a 10 plus. I get them out clean. On a 7 and 9, uh, other mixed things happen, but I can... Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, so, so what I'm going to try to do is sort of run forward and just shoulder check the wolf off of Theo, and then just try to pull Theo to the heat, feet and try to like drag, like run out of there and head back, head up the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, do that. I think in this moment, um, Smith, I don't think you're used to everything going this badly. No. No. Uh, so I'm going to uh, use another hold against you. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's going to make it just a straight roll. Minus one. It's five. Five? Yep, so on that one, on a miss, you fail to get them out, and you've attracted hostile attention. All right, so you fail to get them out, and you have attracted hostile attention. Um, so I think uh, at the top of this landing as Smith, you go... 
uh, to run towards the the creature that has a hold on Theo, but they are ready for you and sort of move out of the way, kind of picking Theo up and holding on to them, um, a hostage, if you will, as all of you hear this loud uh, scraping noise as the very large, intricate doors that, Theo, you know are the doors to the council chambers at the top of this landing are pushed open and uh, uh, two more of these creatures kind of come bounding out. Smith, I think one grabbing on to you in this moment and one of them just sort of looking at Lefla like come on now and you hear a voice from inside the room saying now now darlings there's no need to fight you're making an awful lot of noise outside my throne room and I'd very much like to speak with you <gasps> oh great this feels like one that's gonna monologue I hate when they monologue so you can come in and stop screaming and act like the civilized people you are. Or I can have all my guardians kill you. Your choice. Any preference? I believe talking might be a reasonable course of action at this point in time. Yeah. I'm, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding quite a lot. So one of them is just kind of holding Theo up, like, off the ground, Smith. One of them is starting to grab onto you. Um, a third one making their way towards Lefla. It's just kind of looking at you, like, kind of gauging what your reaction is going to be. Um, I'm going to stow the hunting rifle back inside my vine shroud. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck trying to find it, I suppose. <laughs> I'm imagining them just picking me up and like shaking me out. And <laughs> out. Oh my gosh. I didn't think of what it would be like to try to like pat down Lefla. I think just the vines inside just keep shifting things around. And they... Anyway, um, but yeah, so Lefla appears unarmed now and just has two tendrils, you know, up in the air. All right, so I think the one facing you kind of looks you up and down, kind of squints a little bit, and then just kind of gestures like into the room, like they're gonna let you walk in there of your own accord. One of them's holding on to Theo Smith. One of them is also holding on to you. Do you struggle? Hmm. No. Theo, the, oh, I was gonna say Theo's looking very hard at Smith. Like, I'm, I, do you want me to try? Uh, just see what happens. I feel really cold. I can't feel my feet. All right, so, Lefla, um, of your own accord, sort of making your way into this very large chamber, Smith and Theo, uh, almost carried in by these creatures who are feet taller than you, um, very large, and also all seeming to be... Um, Sentient, sapient, uh, whatever the, the sort of correct mm -hmm. terminology is, but they they know what's going on in there. Uh, they're by no means feral beasts, um, but following the orders of the the voice that is coming in from this room, um, you all make your way in um, another uh, sort of guardian, as uh, as they were called, makes their way out to their friend who you have sedated and gravely wounded. Um, with a uh, with a silver bullet to to the shoulder, um, kind of pulling them into the room as well to tend to their injuries. The doors are shut behind you and barred, and you are all set down at uh, at the feet of a throne, upon which sits a woman, um, which you have all seen before. Um, sort of slender, this kind of long, uh, dark sort of raven hair, um, sitting there in uh, these wonderfully kind of nice, uh, probably gold leaf somewhere on them, uh, robes, a crown atop her head, sort of sitting 
a little bit crooked as if it's just uh, a little bit big for her but she's trying to uh trying to hold it up as best she can um she kind of sits up uh looking vaguely interested in you and says now it's not so hard Well, we do not think we would have been allowed in if we had just come up knocking and say, hey, we would like to talk to the person who has attacked and terrorized this whole populace. But you didn't ask, did you? It was pretty hard. And in our defense, all the other uh, wolves we ran into just tried to eat us first before striking up a conversation. Well. So forgive us if we are a little uh, trigger happy. I'll forgive all your insolence because you fascinate me. Normally in the presence of a queen, people would kneel and bow and... Oh, I am kneeling. You just cannot see because of my anatomy. To be fair... And you're impatient and you interrupt too. That's fascinating. I just never met a talking dog before. Not very popular with the women then, are you? Agent Smith. Do you have a cat in here? Please, we don't. We don't keep cats on the premises. I am interested in what you're all doing here, though, Uh, Smith. uh, Leffler and uh, the bleeding one. Yeah, Yeah, I'm bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Why have you all come here? Please tell me. Uh, we were sent here. By, she was kind of looking at you expectantly. By Aegis. Have you heard of it? Oh, yes, I'm very familiar. Cool. That makes this easier then. Well, for me, maybe, because I know exactly what I'm up against now. Well, if you know what you're up against, then you know it is in your best interest to let us go, leave the people in peace, and get out of here and never show your face anywhere ages can get to again, or you do not know what punishment they will bring upon you for what you have wrought upon this populace. And I would like to use my trust me move. This might be flexing it a little bit. <laughs> Read me the text of the move. I'm vaguely familiar. Yeah. Um, when you tell a normal person the truth in order to protect them from danger, <laughs> I'm trying to protect her from the. From Didn't really get know. past that first sentence there. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna push back on that a little bit. And yeah. Say, Probably not. Yeah. Maybe she's not a werewolf. Maybe she is a normal person. Oh no! You've seen her literally transform into a werewolf. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably not on that one. <laughs> Regardless, Smith backs them up. What they said. Oh. Are you all new? Have you... Mm, you haven't been hunters very long, have you? Oh, no, I I have. Trust me. I've, I've probably been doing this since you were in diapers. I'm new. I know, darling. How old do you think I am, Agent Smith? How old does she look? <laughs> late 20s maybe I don't know it's hard to say how I don't know how the whole dog ears thing has always really just messed me up is it is it seven to one or is it I'm sure your uh, way with compliments is why your wife divorced you yeah it's getting a bit personal we don't have to. We can keep this professional. I, I really don't mean to bring my my baggage into this. This is a new relationship. We can just talk. <laughs> I've been around a very long time. I've known about Aegis for a very long time. And they've known about me. Although I, uh, 
don't imagine unless you were able to do some very powerful magic, you'd be able to talk to any of your, uh, what do you call, what are they calling your hunters now? It's a funny word you have for it. Coursers? Mm hmm That's right. You were just pretending not to know that, weren't you? I mean, you, you knew about me being divorced. I imagine you, you knew about that. I know a lot of things. Okay. I also know how to kill your Aegis courses and have done many times in the past. I honestly can't believe they're still sending you after me. But here we are. So what is it you really want? You want to kill me? You want me to let you go so you can keep your friend over here from bleeding out? I'm very hurt. Uh, are you actually like did you get checked unstable at some point or oh i don't know no, you're not unstable you're just very hurt okay. it's theo he's very hurt <laughs> yeah i've seen him worse off so he's probably fine for right now i'm not fine yeah don't well, listen to him. happen to that beautiful face of his of course i can arrange it if you don't uh get out of my house but as I was saying, this is not your house. This belongs to the people of this city. And you are the interloper here, coming in and messing things up. Oh, I was invited here, darling. And uh, as far as I can see, it's my house now. Well, clearly they did not expect a wolf in sheep's clothing, but I suppose it would be a wolf in wolf's clothing. You all are very heavy on the insults today. All right. Well, me I'm merely stating fact. I'm sorry if you have some insecurities that lead you to interpreting my words as an insult. I have been nothing if not truthful here. And oh, I, would I don't doubt people with us too. Oh, I don't doubt uh, you believe everything you say. You have a very analytical mind, as far as I can tell. Very impressive. <laughs> well, how about this then? Mm. Um, you clearly have us outnumbered. We're, we're not going to get out of here alive if I start shooting at you. So <sighs> there'd be no point in us dying here right now. We'll leave, get out of your hair, take a couple of people with us, be on our way. I don't believe you. What couple of people would you like to take? Um, doesn't matter. I mean, they're all just food to to you. Oh, there's so much more than that. This is my pack, darling. This is my family. Okay, well, I mean, that's creepy and all, but... Um, just a couple of the survivors that are held out in the city. I'm sure you know where they are at this point. I do. We'll just uh, take a few just, just so the boss back at uh, Hadris can pat us on the back. Said we did our best job and we'll be on our way. All right, I'll play your little game. I'll give you two of mine for one of yours. I'll let you take the wonderful councilwoman who I know is holed up somewhere in the plaza. And I'll even give you back her wife who I have here, prisoner in the palace with me. But you leave one of yours as trade. The one here is a wolf now, or, or just, just... Oh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. But she's quite the scrappy fighter. I think she'll do well. But I'll spare her, give her to you. You can reunite her with your uh, your wonderful councilwoman. But you leave me one of yours. Seems fair enough. Let me just talk with my 
Co, we're, we're gonna draw straws, and one of us will stay here. And so, I'm just... so sure. Take your time, darlings. Can we like find a quiet place in the or like can we huddle together in the middle yeah. of this? All right. Yeah. So, Thea, how do you feel about crashing here for for? I don't love it. I, I don't love it. Uh, um, but uh, if you um think it's best, I will. Hmm. Wait, are you? Is this? Are you being sarcastic? No, not this time. Oh no. Um. Uh, I would say that given our various capabilities and strong points, if we are leaving someone behind, it would make the most sense for me to stay here. The rest of you can storm the gates at a later point in time. If we're talking about capabilities, um, this is all kind of my fault, though, so... I'm not going to argue with you there. This means you need to try and make it right. That's true. Um... We we're we're not we're not gonna gonna like leave leave. We're just we gotta regroup. Um, I'm getting hungry, Agent Smith. Please. Do, we're we're working on it. Um, I can, I really I can I can stay here. I if anything were to happen, I could probably take out a few with me if I had to. Or maybe. I I, I agree with I I agree with Level on this one. Uh, it's. They're the most unassuming, and and I don't even know if they can turn you. I mean, what would you be aware? Salad? I, I don't. I, I don't know how that would work. So I I think, and they're not going to eat you. I don't gather them much for herbivores. So I, I think you're probably the safest to stay here. That's a really good point. Um. No offense. Uh. I'm thinking. And we can get you back, get you patched up, and I can call in for some reinforcements. Maybe uh, maybe now that they know, we know there's some sort of relationship, we can get some more people here to help because we are grossly undermanned right now. I feel like maybe we shouldn't have stormed the castle without awful numbers. Well, I didn't really... <clears throat> I've never run into uh, werewolves like this before, so... Yeah, my bad. I'll uh, I'll take I'll take responsibility for this one. Um, well, I think we already decided that it's my bad. Okay. We were doing great up well, until you know we uh, I, I, I I wasn't. Okay, I'll let you take the blame. I'll let them know back at HQ. But we gotta make okay. a decision here. I'll uh, Lefla, we will be right back for you. We gotta get the higher ups out of here though, because that's if they get eaten and everything goes to shit, it's all done. So. Fuck, I hate this. Okay. Turn back around. All right. Sounds like a great deal. Um, one request, however. The one that we leave here. You're not going to just, like, kill them as soon as we walk out the door, right? That's going to make this a lot more difficult for one of us to volunteer. You think so little of me. I haven't really gotten a chance to, to get to know you yet, so... Well, you did sort of come into my house with a bunch of guns and just shoot my people, so... Okay. No, I'm not just going to kill you. I to be fair, have much more fun things in store. We haven't actually killed any of you yet, so, you know... I think we're even at this point, right? So... Well, Aiden over there, who you have both drugged, I think, and shot, is... a. Uh, not feeling so well, but... They said that it will slow his bleeding, and if you let me tend to him, I can keep him from bleeding out. So you're staying, then? Yes, I will be the one staying back. Besides, I am a much more charming conversationalist than either of these two. You are getting the best deal here. Rude. I agree with that. Wholeheartedly. Well, Lefla, Come. Sit with me. She kind of motions to uh, 
a chair that is sort of next to uh, next to the throne that they have pulled to the center of this room. I will go over and just hop up, and I think my legs are probably short enough, and they're just like little little leafy tendrils <laughs> kicking back and forth. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Well, Leffler will stay here with me, and uh, she kind of motions to uh, one of the uh, the guards that are standing by the door and says, "Go on, fetch the lady." Um, and after a uh, a moment, um, one of them comes back leading um, an orcish woman, um, taller than uh, than some of the other orcs you have seen, and fairly well built. Um, in uh, sort of her hands tied together with ropes, um, leading her uh, a little, a little bruised and a little harried, um, but no, nothing permanent, no worse. We're kind of into the room. It kind of tosses her to you, and she looks terrified and a little confused. Um, but you're not wolf people, so you all right? I will be. What's your name? Isabel. I'm Aiden Smith. This is Theo. That one's Lefla. Hello. Um, we're going to take you out of here. Um, just one thing before we do. Um, and I'm going to like pop, <laughs> I guess like one of the extra magazines I have, uh, just like pop one of the silver bullets out and just like touch it to their hand or something just for a moment, just to see if it like sizzles or anything like that. Uh, nothing happens, and she just kind of looks at you and looks down at your hand, kind of looks at you and says, Satisfied? Yep, yep, all good. It has been lovely meeting you. Uh, good. Your highness will suffice. Your, your highness. Right. Go on then. Take your prize. Ow. You put up a good fight, darling. Go on. Hmm. Huh. Uh, and I guess we leave hurriedly. <laughs> All right. So uh, the three of you leaving Lefla uh, in the clutches of Letitia, um, Theo and Smith, and uh, Isabel, the three of you uh, leave the palace unharried and uh, make your way back out into the streets of Lunaterra. Um, this is a good time to take a break unless you have something mm. you need to do right now. No, I was just going to say we stopped by the cabaret, but we can do that. When I we... figured that's where you were going to head. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so on your way through the streets to the uh, Fennel and Fire cabaret, we'll go ahead and take a very quick break. Um, thanks everybody for watching and hanging out with us. And thanks to our new followers out there in the universe. We appreciate you a lot. Um, we will be right back in just a couple of minutes. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through our break. Everybody. Yeah. We're back. We're playing this game which is titled monster of the week the show is all myths are true and things are not looking so good for the coursers so we will jump right back into it um i'm gonna start with lefla as uh you see smith and theo and isabel uh exit the room the door is shut behind them um you are sitting in a um, a large, uh, sort of intricately carved wooden chair next to the throne that has been uh, sort of pushed to the, the center of this rectangular room. Um, the room is not super deep, but it is very, very long. Um, and you can kind of get a good a good feel for what is going on here. Um, based on what Theo told you, this was the council chambers uh, where the uh, the council of the city would meet and do business and all of those things. So there are several actually sort of large throne-like chairs um, that look as though they have been pushed aside, overturned, gotten out of the way. So this one can sit in the center of the room um, and that is to uh, to the right 
sort of on this edge of the room. And on the other side of the room, um, there is no furniture or anything. It looks as though everything has sort of been cleared out and gotten out of the way. Um, but there is this faint kind of glowing coming from the floor over there. Um, but I think you sort of taking in this room after Smith and, uh, and Theo and Isabel leave, uh, Letitia sort of turns to you and says, so, let's, uh, what do you know about magic? I know that I am not especially good at it. You know, it is our dear friend Theodosius who is much better at it. Well, it is sort of a strength to know our weaknesses, is it not? But you are a healer of sorts, yes? Oh, that I am. Do you, do you want me to tend to Aiden? I mean, I said that sedative would slow his bleeding, but it is still a grievous wound. I would like that very much, yes. In order to do that, I am going to have to get a few more supplies. Uh, my personal stock is running a bit low, but fortunately, I see that you already have some here in the palace. We passed by a, a cold storage room on our way up. I just need to grab a few supplies. You may happily send a guard or three along with me. I just need to grab some things and then I can tend to Aiden. All right. That will work just fine. And she'll kind of uh, look over towards uh, two of her uh, her four currently that are in the room with her. Uh, one is tending to Aiden, one kind of guarding the door, and she'll send the other two with you, which is now. Don't be gone long, dear. We have a lot to discuss. Oh, it will not take long. I mean, I will have... I'll be back in a moment. All right. And she will send two of these guards with you. So you want to go uh, back down to that first floor to the freezer? Yep. Okay. Uh, so they will escort you where where you need to go. Um, so they escort you down two flights of stairs. Again, um, y'all are going to be in great shape by the time you leave this place. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, down the hallway off of the, the entrance towards this cold storage room. Um, I think one of them sort of opens the door uh, for you. And they just kind of stand there with the door open waiting to yep. see what you're going to do. So I will go in. I will start grabbing some things, including just like cold compresses. Um, I'm grabbing far more than I actually need, but uh, sure. what are some of those? You mentioned there were liquids and bottles at the back. Anything that is you know, something other than just wines and liqueurs? Um, I think it is mostly wine. Um, I think there are, there are probably a couple of bottles of like, of spirits or like liquor, more like, a, like vodka and things like that, that you can sort of keep cold. Um, I think maybe a small stash of those in the back. Um, some of this is also like food mm -hmm. and things that it looks like there are, uh, there are being being kept cold um, in here, but it is it is mostly a sort of food and drink storage area. Unless there is something specific that you are looking for. Um, Alex doesn't actually know these things, but Leffel is looking for things that when mixed together will create just the most acrid scent possible. Like something that is just terrible to try to smell. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I think um, there is some. I don't know what smells bad. Yeah, uh, things that would be cold that smell bad. Um, I think there, I mean, there are tons of bottles of like aged wine and things like that back there. Um, I think there is also this section that you find that is this like. It's like a it's like a cheese cooler essentially um and i think you find this in the back sort of this very very aged um um like like brie or something uh or like a blue cheese that sort of the older it gets the worse it smells mm -hmm. um so i think there are a few things in there you can pull from there's a lot of a lot of liquid and alcohol that probably has a very strong scent just because of how old it is that if you mix it all together it would probably be pretty rank yeah so I will grab that. I think doing, trying to get as many things as I can that will stay 
like not smelly until I, you know, uncork them, mix them together, things like that. I think I will bring the cheese. Um, I think it's, that, it's that's going to start smelling. Um, so it's it's wrapped up. So I think once you once you pop that open, that's probably probably a strong smell. But for now, I think you're you're okay. Yep. So get those. Go back with the guards and head back up. Okay. All right. So you get the smelliest possible things you can find out of the uh, cold room and head back up toward the throne room. And you are greeted with a smile um, and a glance. And Letitia says, sir, find what you needed. Yes, uh, I will get to work right away. We can chat as I work or I can focus my attention 100% on our good friend Aiden here. You focus on him and we'll chat when you're done. All right. Give me a little bit of space and some time and he will be, well, not good as new, but no longer bleeding out on these lovely carpets. I'll be watching. And uh, they back off from uh, from Aiden's body and you set to work. Um, I want to cut back to uh, Smith and Theo and Isabel who are, you're heading towards the cabaret. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so you are very quickly. Um, do you, I assume you have like cut her yeah. vines free and everything at this point. Um, so she is kind of running along with you. Um, is there anything you would like to accomplish before you make it back? Well, do you know anything about what's going on here? I mean, meaning what? Theo, what did you see? Um, uh, they, they, like I said, they were in, invited. They were invited guests. Uh, and then apparently attacked and took over um, in the council chambers area. Yeah. Your, uh, your partner left that out. Why mm-hmm. did you... Why did you invite them in? Who are these people? I didn't people? invite shit into this city. Then who did? First of all, fuck you. Whoa, a lot of hostility here. I'm just asking some questions. Second of all, is my wife still alive? Yeah, thanks to us. I'm sure. Then that's where we're going. She sort of starts walking. That's where I'm taking you. I'm just asking you quite All right, fine. Am I really that bad with people? Yeah. Do you know where you're going, though? Probably better than you, but... Yeah, we're I'm... going together, we're going together. If you want information, you're going to take me to where Kyrian is, and then we can talk. I'm really lightheaded. That was the point. Yeah, we need to... Okay. Um, Just left our dock back at the... I, this really isn't good. I gotta get in contact with Aegis. I could probably heal myself, but mm, it hasn't gone well so far. What are the odds that you blow yourself up? It's 50 50 at this point. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, I'm gonna run to the van and contact HQ. Um, let them know what's going on. You know where the, You know how to get back to the cabaret, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll buddy system. Now she knows where we're going. I think Isabel pipes up and says, is that where they are? The fire that's, fire? that's where they are. Yeah, let's go. Theo, Don't let me die, Isabel, please. And Theo. Yeah. Do, do not let her out of your sight. I don't trust any of them now. Oh my God. Okay, got I'm, it. I'm right here, she says. And I, I don't she trust is, you. She is like three of Theo. I think she's a very large sort of orcish woman. And I think seeing your state and kind of just not having any of this just sort of scoops Theo up ah! and it's like there you go now you can see me the whole time oh this is nice we'll see you when you get back uh Mr Smith Smith right Mr Smith well I'll take care of your friend and I'll take care of me and you uh go do your business all right thanks for the rescue and uh bye and she sort of starts to just walk off with hold well, I Theo. like you. Your partner's much nicer than you are. All right. I really like you. What's your name again? Isabel. Oh, I'm Theo. Nice to uh, carry you, I guess. That's quite nice, really. Is that right. weird to say? Yeah. 
and uh, she is just carrying Theo off towards the the cabaret. Um, you make it there unscathed. She lives here. She knows where she's going. Uh, Snape, Yay. you're going to the van. I'm just popping over to the van quickly so I can get in contact. I assume the van is the way that we have to contact people. I just sort of have. Yes. Okay. Um, That's how we've been doing it. I'm so using. I'm using my move when you deal with the agency. Um, okay. I'm generally giving them all the information that we have so far. Werewolves in the town. They were apparently brought in by somebody that was in, tr- in power. Um, there is a woman named Letitia that is in charge of them who seems to know a lot about us um, and has a lot of intel on our agency. Um that this is much worse than we initially thought it was and we need we need backup asap okay all right do you have to roll for this yeah i gotta roll plus sharp um so the deal with me the agency is requesting help or gear so i'm requesting help right um or making excuses for a failure but i'm requesting help i haven't failed yet we'll see um Okay, that's a seven plus one is eight. Uh, so on a seven and nine, things aren't so great. You might get chewed out by your superiors and there will be fallout, but you get what you need for the job. Okay, uh, so I think you you know you're gonna catch hell for this. Yeah. And it's 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 been a long time since I think you have felt this feeling, but you know when you get back, that, uh, that your superior officer is going to have your ass for this one. Yeah. Um, but we'll hold on to that for now. Um, I think you you send this communication um, with as much information as you have. The name Letitia. Um, the fact that they were brought into the city as uh, as diplomats based on like what, what Theo saw. Um any kind of information you can possibly give them and i think you send this uh this correspondence out um and you wait for a response you wait for a minute a couple minutes pass you don't hear anything come on and then from uh from where the the van is hidden, I think outside in the alley, you hear this popping sound, which you've heard before. I hear sort of every time you go through a portal to a new place. Thank God. All right, I pop open the door of the van, hopefully greet the army of people that are here to help. All right, you uh, out in the alley, you see in their uh, sort of standard issue a uh, unit gear um several say five uh members of uh your unit and one sort of commanding officer who uh, who who do you, who's there who came to help you uh is somebody probably on the same level yeah i think um, i think she's uh agent parker um i know her first name is sally um, so that's okay. probably what I call her uh, when we're not in the field. Um, I think we probably went through uh, training together and have just been sort of neck and neck. I, pr- I bet we probably have less sort of like a cordial working relationship, but aren't like best friends or anything. When when you say training, do you mean unit training or do you yeah. mean like does she does she also know periwinkle or? Uh, no, I think specific unit training. Okay. We might have come from different departments or something. Um, so. She might have been here. I imagine she might have been at Aegis a little bit longer than Smith has. Um, okay. All right. So you see uh, your longtime coworker and maybe friend, if uh, mm. if Smith uh, would call anybody a friend. Like we'll drink um, coffee together, like around like the in the break room, but we don't really like. Sure. Know each other's middle names. Sure. All right. Which is the mark uh, of a true friend. I don't know. I've never had friends before, so. Smith or Sean? <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or oh, all right. Uh, so um, you hear this popping sound, and out uh, from this small sort of uh, glowing kind of tear in the air steps through um, Agent Parker and four 
uh, unit agents who are dressed in uh, not suits like you are, um, but they're kind of standard armored gear, um, carrying guns and I think uh, helmets and things like that. And um, Agent Parker in the front kind of steps out, uh, gets her bearings, kind of looks around, looks at you and just nods and says, Smith. Parker. <clears throat> Good to see you. Welcome to the circus. So, werewolves. Werewolves. Oh, I know. All, I thought uh, I thought they were gone. Too. Vaccinating, right? Yeah, right. Apparently, they didn't get the memo here. All right. Well, we'll get them sorted out. Uh, so, uh, point us in the direction, I guess. There's a cabaret up the road. A lot of the survivors are held up there. Um, I sent Theo there. There's a um, dignitary that we need to. Um, well, they've told me to keep an eye on, make sure they get out safe, but the bulk of them, and I'm a gesture up towards the um, estate or the, the castle, um, and say, the bulk of them are up that way. We got our asses pretty well handed to us just a minute ago. Um, so I think we should regroup at the cabaret with Theo and Periwinkle and then take another stab at it. All right, well. We're with you. Uh, boss is not happy. Yeah, boss no. We'll, we'll deal with that. I'll, I'll deal with that when, when the time comes. I think it's more than you think it is. Uh, what's the the name that you sent? Letitia? Does that mean anything to you? Not to me, but it does to somebody. She knows a lot about our uh, protocol. More than any beast that we've, I typically come across. Hmm. I don't know if she used to be Aegis or something, but. No, I doubt that. But if there's some kind of info leak or mole or something, we're all going to get our asses handed to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, let's, uh. Let's get going then. The faster we deal with this, the faster I can get my ass chewed out. Oh. I got your back. All right. Let's go. Follow you. <clears throat> All right. Come so on, boys and girls. <laughs> Harold, you look like you've lost weight. You look good. Good. Thanks. You know, I've been uh I've been working out a lot lately. It's uh, it's been really helpful. And also I have this new like protein powder that I've been using in the place of uh of my breakfast. It's really kind of like got my metabolism going and Yeah, I never is it the 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 vegan stuff, the vegetable I just Yeah, I, yeah, no, the chocolate flavored one like dude. Yeah, I I they just made me feel so bloat. I I can't get anything done if I try. I think I just at Parker is like, okay. Oh, yeah. You're really going to get your ass chewed out. <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, we head to the cavalry. All right, so we go head to the cavalry, and uh, Harold is your new best friend, I guess. Um, sure. uh, so you head back to the cabaret about time shortly after um, Theo. I think you, uh, Isabel, probably put you down at some point and kind of helped you in, um, but you make it back to the cabaret. Um, Periwinkle is there. Everything is intact and fine. The barrier that she has been keeping up is is intact. Um, and they haven't had any sort of commotion at the time. Um, while you are waiting on Smith, um, Periwinkle, who is trained in first aid, can apply first aid to your wounds of Theo. You can uh, lose one harm. Oh, sweet! Off of you. Um, so you should. That puts you down to two, I think. Yep. Do I also lose one harm or not? Because I'm running around and stuff. No, you're running around and stuff. Okay, just make sure. Um, once you once you get back, um, I think because you can you can apply first aid once per injury. So I think once you make it back ah. to the cabaret, um, I think Periwinkle can also kind of give you some first aid, kind of patch you up a little bit, so you can also lose one harm um, as this scene plays out. But I want to go back to Lefla. Mm -hmm. um, you're a medic. A trained medic, so I, mm -hmm. I won't make you roll to sort of patch up um, this this aid in a person, things like that. But you're able to, uh, with your stock, sort of patch him up, stabilize him, um, and uh, he's sort of sleeping it off, as it were. Um, but he's he's not going to die. Um, it, it's taken him a little bit to to recover from the 
serious amount of damage that you did to him <laughs> um, with your combination syringe and hunting rifle, um, but he'll, he'll make it. All right, uh, sort of. <laughs> I just realized I probably have, you know, a bunch of very bloody leaves all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're kind of gross right now. Yes. Uh, well, you see, blood is never fun to filter through, but uh, anyway, um, you're asking me about the magic. I take it it has something to do with the glowing, you said it was the floor earlier? Yes. The glowing floor over there? Or was this just an idle curiosity of yours? Oh, little of column A, little of column B. Uh, would you like to take a look at what we've uh, accomplished in the few days we've been here? I love to brag on my children. I mean, I am always happy to see a mother proud of her children. Come. And she, uh, I think, walks you over to one side of the room, um, and you can kind of see where this glow is coming from. There is this large um, circle that has been carved into the floor. Um, uh, there is uh, runes all kind of throughout the edge of it and some crossing lines um, in between, sort of through the middle of the circle, and a slight glow is coming off of them. Um, and then off to the sides, kind of around the main circle, there are these sigils that are carved into the floor. Um, not, not anything that I think you recognize immediately, but in a style that you recognize. Um, the kind of harsh lines and angles, lots of sort of triangular glyphs and hard lines. Um, you saw something similar on the wall in the uh, in the village elder's house. But not that actual sigil? Not the same one, but in the same kind of style. And I'll show you the handout that I have. Well, you click show. It should all be in your journals now under handout. Yes. Uh, but there is a couple um, that are sort of these harsh lines and a lot of triangles and some circles at the end. Um, so in the same style, uh, but uh, but not the same one. So those are the the two that you can make out. Mm -hmm. And I think she's kind of showing you this and says, so impressive, yes? As I said, magic is not my forte, but uh... I mean, can you explain to me what some of these sigils mean? It certainly looks impressive, but uh, it's like trying to explain to, you know, if we try to explain to the people of this world how, you know, how the combustion engine works, they would not get the, the details. They would just understand it is an impressive piece of technology. Hmm. Well, I don't want to give away all our secrets, but... Uh... Sigil magic, it works on intent. It's letters and numbers and all of these, you know, fancy things you have to think about. But what really matters is your intent when you draw them. There's a formula to them, a way that we all start. A certain place for numbers, a certain place for the letters, and they equal each other, but... When you draw the right lines and you really think about what you want, you can create some really spectacular things. These brought my family here. And they led us to uh, keep making our family larger, sharing the love, as it were. So that is, what do you intend to just spread lycanthropy to uh, this, this city, this world, turn all of the people here into your children? Not all of them. Oh yes, some must be food, mustn't they? Some are not worthy. Still, that is a lot of mouths to feed, and I imagine the family reunions just get unmanageable. 
think I'll keep you around for a while yet. You make me laugh. Tell me, Leffler. What is it you think your friends plan to do? Do you think they'll run in guns blazing again and try to save you and put a bullet in me and that, uh, what's his name? Smith will give a very wonderful and emotionless monologue about how you've done the thing again. You've won. You've killed the monsters. Clearly, you do not know Smith as well as you uh, appeared to. He is not much of one for monologuing. A man of few words, that one. But for the rest of it, that was pretty on the nose. But... Right. Well, it's always good to know what I'm up against. I had sort of hoped you would all try something, you know, smarter, more interesting, but if blood must be shed, blood must be shed. Uh, as you were saying, we are very interesting, so we may surprise you yet. Um, and I think I want to try to do... I still have an investigate a mystery hold from last session. Sure. Um... I think what I want to do um, gosh, which one do I want to ask I think what has been being concealed here and what well, with my earlier questions trying to get at like is is all she really plans just spreading lycanthropy making more werewolves or is there something else going on here okay uh, yeah I think from from what you already sort of knew, um, what all of you had already sort of gathered about what was going on, and then based on this conversation here, um, I think the I think you get the impression that her goal really is as simple as that. Um, that she has this sort of core family that she brought with her, um, and that her intention over time is to sort of create more and more of this family um, that she can control. Um, I, I don't think a lot of it is being concealed from you. Um, mm -hmm. If anything, the, uh, the thing that is being concealed is probably that she is acting like she knows more than she actually does. Um, but I think you you have a good read on her intent that her uh, her family is most important to her and uh, and that is sort of what she is aiming for is to sort of be the matriarch of this this growing family. Okay. So I suppose might as well get this question out of the way. Have you ever attempted to turn a seedling before? Because we, we are not very meaty. I, I don't even know how lycanthropy would affect one of us. I'm not particularly eager to try, but if you already have this knowledge, this experience, uh, call it morbid curiosity on my part. No, uh, I've never tried. Your kind has never really uh, interested me much in the way of, you know, food and and violence um anyway no offense i mean we are you know obviously over you cannot overgeneralize an entire species but by and large seedlings are peaceful left well enough and alone though i wonder would i start to transform into wolfsbane if i were afflicted you entertain me i like that no, I myself have never tried to uh, turn one of your kind, but who knows? You'd have to ask my children. I'm sure one of them is trying to eat a bush at some point. No, not going to go there. Um... <laughs> <coughs> We'll explain to you later, Lindsay. I love oh. the door open. <laughs> no, I got it. Yep. Um, so, uh, I suppose that does raise the question. Other than, you know, entertainment value, is there something else you want me to do? Or shall I just 
sitting look pretty. I can try and bloom for you, if that would raise the aesthetic value. No, I... I want you to stay here as bait. I thought that was clear. I'm just waiting for your friends to come back so it can be a fair fight and I can show them who's their queen. Like I have so many others in the past. Well then, if that's the case, does anyone have some cards? It's going to get boring just sitting here and waiting otherwise. I'm sure I can find something to uh, entertain you. And he sort of looks around, um, and one of the uh, large sort of brute creatures um, kind of looks at her and, like, looks back and then goes over to this large kind of, like, pile of just, like, stuff and starts pulling things out. And there's, like, a set of cards. There's, like, a chess set, but, like, some of the pieces are, like, broken. There's, like, he's just, like, pulling out all of this stuff, just, like... It will have to do, I suppose. All right, so uh, passing the time as a, however Lefla pleases. Um, it is, you are a captive, um, but it is not not an uncomfortable uh, prison that you find yourself in. Um, so at the cabaret, um, we will go back to Theo and Smith and the rest. Um, I think Periwinkle being there, having sort of patched up some of your wounds, so both of you uh, took away one harm from those. Um, what's the plan? All right. Theo, uh, are you feeling better? Right as rain! All right. Well, we're going to be heading back in there in a second. Oh, great. Yeah. Here's my thought on it. Uh, Parker, you and your team pretty well equipped to probably take on uh, some the pack uh, larger group, not as beefy, but can thin their numbers, get their attention a bit. We gotta take out this alpha though. Letitia she seems like she's gonna be the real thorn in the long run. Right. I think if your team makes a Diversion outside the castle. And Theo and I will head up and rescue Lefla and take out Letitia. Easy peasy. Ooh. I think uh, Parker is sort of like eyes Theo a little bit, and Smith just kind of like looks at you. And I think you've you've known her long enough that you can tell her face is like. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Um, you're going to need as many people as you can get. Uh, so I, I wouldn't want to take any of your crew here. So I'm locked and loaded. Good to go. Round two. Feel good about it this time. Can't go any worse than it did last time. It could, actually. Mm, well, if it does, then we won't be alive to know about it. I think um, as you're as you're having this conversation, um, there is this sort of this group of people that because they've sort of like, for the most part, whenever you come into the cabaret, been kind of like keeping to the edges of the room, sort of out of your way, making sure that you have room to work and everything. But there is this this group um, of of orcs that have sort of gathered kind of near uh, you, Smith and Theo. Um, standing with uh, Kyrian, who has been uh, very happily reunited with uh, with her wife Isabel at this point, um, and they are kind of standing together with this other group of people um, and are kind of li listening to, to your plan, um, and I think Isabel um, kind of steps forward a little bit and says, so you going back in? Don't really see any other choice. I'm out of a job if I don't. We want to help. Great. Got any silverware? I'm sure we could find something. But uh, I've got me 
and uh, about 15 others who want to do what we can to take back our city. So, Put us right. where you want us. Like I said, keep all the pack off of us. If, you, if, you can, if we can do this, just uh, one on one, well, two or three on one, depending on Leftless condition when we get there. Uh, we can take out the the Alpha. I think she's kind of nods and is sort of like turning back towards this this group of like 15 or so kind of other orcs that she has behind her that are like you know, upright and healthy and sort of ready to help and I think Kyrian kind of steps forward and says like I some of those things out there, they're they're not with them. They're us. They're our people. This is not my area of expertise. I don't know how to tell the difference, but... Please, just... If you can find a way to get them back to us, it would mean everything. Kind of smack Theo on the back and say, ah! he's going to take care of it. Sure I am. Got it. Don't even fret for a second. I've got it. I'll appear and in my pocket. I've got some mm -hmm. Just be clear though. Your lives are more important. Stay alive. Kill you have to. But um hopefully we take out the big kahuna. Nobody's given the call and the orders. Snakes and dogs works the same way. Cut off the head. You know. Bingo, bingo. I've lost a lot of blood tonight, so we just need to move along with this. I'm not sure I understand what you just said 100%, uh, Smith, but I, I never would have gotten this far or have become the leader that I think I am if I thought my life was more important than my people's. Yeah, no, I, I get that, but I mean, if... Sure, yeah, do your thing. I'm gonna get chewed out anyway, so... But are you guys, like, really sure you want to leave here? I mean, they really can't get in. I, I The magic is sound. Um, well, are you sure? Some of us are gonna stay. I'm, I'm gonna stay, but... I'm not going to tell my people they can't fight for their home. Well, I'm not going to stop you. I don't have enough bullets. I just, I mean... We're tra He's trained for this. We're trained for this. I'm highly trained. Uh, no offense. Hi highly. To either of you, but... We're very grateful for your help. We don't know you. We don't know who you're training, and... I can't tell them no. There's so yeah. many of them, and they love their families, and they love this place, so... Let them help, but... Please, try to save some of them. Well, whoever's up to it, just do what Parker says. She'll keep them uh, in the right place, keep them alive. I, I just, just, just one question before we go, though. And I, I asked your partner this, and she didn't seem too thrilled with me. Um, why was Letitia brought here? All I know is what I was told. We were instructed that visiting diplomats from another nation were coming to discuss trade routes. So we welcomed them in, like we always do. Gave them food, broke bread with them, rooms to stay in, everything they could have wanted. And they turned on us in the night. 
Did anyone specific organize this? I couldn't say. It's... You know, eight of us on the council, it... Could have come through anyone. I don't... I know what you're getting at, Adrian Smith, and I... I don't think anyone that was put on this council would have done this knowingly. Hmm. Yeah, sort of. Suspected that. All right. Well, we'll talk about it later if if we live. Uh, Theo, ready to go? Oh, yeah, with that stirringly confident, inspiring speech, very ready to go. It's the best you're going to get. I know. If you need speeches, you're in the long, wrong line of work. I'm so confident mm. in this plan. Just don't die. Slap you on the back it. again. Oh, okay. Lock and load. Okay. So you lock and load and head out. So the plan is very quick outline. Uh, massive distraction by the villagers and Aegis uh, coursers. Theo sneaks us in with magic. Okay. Alternatively, <laughs> we could not sneak in. I, mean, I feel like sneaking probably won't be too necessary, uh, but I guess we need to. Do you do you have any thoughts on how you if, if any other ideas? But yeah, just blow off one of the walls and climb up. Oh three yeah, yeah, that works too. Walking. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm cool with that. It's Great. not my castle. So massive distraction led by Parker. We breach. The massive destruction. <laughs> massive destruction led by Theo. Um, Lefla. As soon as stuff kicks off, the plan is to mix together the bad smelling stuff with the hopes that, you know, the wolves will have more sensitive, super smelling, and it will affect them worse. Maybe okay. cause them to be off uh, off their best foot. Okay. I love this plan. <laughs> the only thing I want to add is that I want to, if possible, does A just have like uh, sort of Pathfinder style like zip lines that we can use um, where Theo can create an opening on like the third floor and we can like zoop, just like straight up from a distance. Like a pressurized, yeah, like yeah. a grappling hook, but it's a zip line. <laughs> Either that or we go to the back of the building and we get up and we like rappel down like through the breach when once it opens. Yeah, sure. I just, the, the visual of that made me. Happy. Yeah, yeah, no. Zip lines are a go. Cool. Um, so you set out um, Lefla, super confident uh, that your uh, your team is going to come and rescue you. And with a plan set in motion, um, Smith and Theo, do you take anyone else with you? Periwinkle should stay behind, right? To guard Periwinkle should people. definitely help keep the townspeople alive. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Um. Nope. I think everyone else is just gonna die. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, when you all are ready, um, you uh, sort of set this plan in motion. Smith, Theo, and I think Parker there, um, sort of trying her best, Theo, to kind of like fill the. She's a little more charismatic than Smith. Not a whole lot. Um, but just enough. I think that it that it makes a difference and that I think you're the three of you getting ready to go. And as Smith kind of walks off, I think she uh, kind of walks out with you, Theo, and is like, hey, listen. What? What? I didn't do it. You've been spending too much time with Smith. You're going to be great, all right? Oh, you know, it's so nice to hear some positive feedback from one supervisor, like just once in a while. I mean, right. I know I do all some right. wrong, but OK. Talk about it later. Watch his ass. Always do. That Theo, came come out. Come on, get the I, water out. 
All You're right, dead. so Smith yelling from the door. I think Theo, you snap to attention and then start running. Um, and then Parker, I think, gathers uh, her crew and the um, the survivors that want to help. And I think she sends them kind of careening out into the streets to cause this distraction. Um, and as you hear the uh, this howling kind of pick up from, uh, from the streets and also from the direction of the palace that is heading towards Parker and her people, um, Smith and Theo, you take the opportunity to make it back up through the palace. What What is your point of entry? How are you getting back in? Well, seeing how I had a vision of everything from the inside, and I'm a smart, smart elf, I'm going to deduce from the outside where the exterior wall is to the room that Lovela is in. I'm just going to blow sure. it straight out. Uh... And then we zip line in. I was gonna say you should roll something. I would like to use magic. Yeah, yeah, you, I think you know where you're going. I just want, roll plus weird to use magic just to see how the explosion goes. Great, great, great. Theo is just like muttering various like memorized pep talks under his breath as he like gives himself some tattoos. Oh, that's not too bad, it's an eight. Okay, so it works imperfectly. Um, so you're gonna blow the thing wide open, um, but there is a glitch that you choose. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, I feel like there's one here that's pretty obvious. Yeah. I think it draws immediate unwelcome attention. Yeah. All right, uh, so uh, left, left from inside this uh, throne room, you hear this explosion um, is all it is. And one of the uh, the walls of the room just blows inward. Um, nothing that is going to like hurt anyone inside. Um, it There is sort of this control to it. And I think you sort of realize what is happening at this point, I think you've spent enough time uh, with with Theo and Smith to know that, yep, they're coming for you. Um, so there is this loud sort of rocking as the room shakes. Um, but I think uh, the blast Theo sort of emanates from you. And there is this loud noise that sort of emanates not only from like where the explosion is happening, but also from you and so from behind you right a couple of blocks over where you know this distraction is happening um you can hear the sort of loud howl go up and everyone knows where you are that's what i always wanted everyone knows where you are and everyone knows um that something has just gone terribly wrong you have done once again a very very loud Thing. Um, but so this blast sort of rocks the room, Lefla, um, and I think Letitia uh, uh, doesn't look super shaken, but I think she kind of starts a little bit and looks at you and kind of looks around and says, well, interesting. Um, as Smith and Theo zip line into yes. the room, yes. I guess, is what you're doing. Woo! That's fine. Um, you just do that. So you, uh, with your Aegis technology that Parker definitely brought for you and was like, yes, do this, go. Um, you hear this clicking sound, Lefla, in the room as uh, up towards you, Smith and Theo just sort of fly into the room on a zip line um, and they are there with you. Well, I say to Letitia, it's about to get even more interesting, and I will pull out from within, you know, my vine shroud, the two bottles that I was concealing, pop the okay. cork, mix them together, and just, like, smash them on the ground. Okay, so, uh, Smith and Theo, you slide into this room on the zip line just in time to see, uh, Lefla sort of pull out these weird grenades, I guess, um, and mm, bottles, but yeah. Smash them on the ground, um, and a smell hits you and it is like it's disgusting it's gross um and the two of you are kind of like oh that's nasty um but the uh the other creatures in the room not letitia but her her um her three kind of guards that are still around sort of like shake their heads and look very 
disoriented and then there is you know smoke coming in and debris and everything is flying and then in addition to the smell um they are just wildly shaking their heads trying to figure out what is going on in this room and As i open fire you come in you open fire all right uh i think that's where we're gonna have to end no oh, this time um because two steps forward three steps back i feel like a we're, lot of stuff is about to happen <laughs> we're so, like right where we left off last time as i the, feel like yeah you are uh as the the grenade goes off and the uh the wolves are sufficiently disoriented uh smith sort of steps up to the plate and opens fire um we will pick up with those gunshots um next week Next week Yay! or two weeks. Two weeks from now. Next time is what I mean. Um, so, I was like, wow! <laughs> surprise! Uh, just kidding. We're staying on the same schedule we've always been at. So two weeks from now, the following Thursday um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, same time, same place. Um, thank you, everybody, for playing. And thank you, everybody out there um, who was watching and following along with our very dramatic storyline um, that has taken a lot of twists and turns that I did not expect it to um, but is very exciting nonetheless um, let's see I don't know if I have any announcements check us out Saturday need. yeah we'll be back on Saturday uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for Saturday nights. That is our D and D 5e uh, sort of campaign that we are we are doing. Sean is running that for us. It's very fun. Um, lots of exciting things are happening. So join us then on Saturday, um, and then on Monday I'll be back talking at you again um, for a Motley Mondays one shot, um, which is going to be really exciting and really fun. Also Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then we'll go from there. So yeah. That's all I've got. Anybody have anything they'd like to contribute? Nope. Sorry for missing Wednesday. I'll make it up to you. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Thanks to our new uh, followers. Um, also, we have a giveaway going right now, um, which is very, very fun. You can find that information on our Twitter. It's our pinned tweet uh, right now, but all of that information is on Twitter. You can find that. We're giving away a copy of uh, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. So click the tweet, press the buttons do all the things um and uh enter to win that we're almost to our first twitch follower goal in which uh when we hit that we will give away some uh, some other fun stuff so do that and uh i think that's all i've got so join us in two weeks uh, for the actual conclusion, uh, which I thought was going to be this week, but turns out it's going to be two weeks from now, uh, of this uh, very exciting uh, little Monster of the Week arc. Um, but until then, good game and good night, Internet. Night, Internet. Night, Internet. <laughs>